to get sober, that's why it's the first step. You gotta admit you got a problem. And a lot of people don't wanna do that. I was a bad drunk, I drove all the time too. It's just luck that no one got hurt. Ed Lattimore interview, take one. When I think about what it was like growing up in my house, I don't have a lot of safe and warm memories, which is really surprising and, and terrifying, but that's the truth. My mom did the best I think she could with what she knew. She always had money for cigarettes and could always figure out how to have money for cigarettes, but we couldn't figure out how to get out of our, our neighborhood and have better opportunities and experiences. If I was to total up the amount of time I spent with my dad, it would easily come to less than a month. I felt rejection like no other. I started drinking at 17. Drinking every single weekend, that's how it starts. And then the weekend turns into, oh, there's a special Thursday night, a special Friday night. So now your weekend's four days. When you don't have work the next day, you gotta drink that day too. You do it at first because you're trying to prove yourself to other people and gain acceptance. And then you don't know any other way to drink. After high school, I wasn't doing a thing with my life. I hated being a normal dude. I remember I made the decision, find a boxing gym. And then once I made that decision, everything I did in my life revolved around this. It gave me a purpose. I moved to LA because I, I, um, I beat the champion from California, but I didn't know anybody. I was really lonely. My brain went, huh. Well, I know I felt really happy when I was drinking all my friends, so why don't I just reverse that and try to drink and make myself happy by myself? I was drinking a lot then. I was modifying my boxing schedule so I could go drink at the bar and who my friends were and who I'd go see and hang out with. It all started to be influenced by whether there was alcohol available. So I said, all right, it's gotta go. I tried to be sober that lasted for about a week. And, and that pattern continued a lot. Well, I'll tell you one thing about getting sober. Well, a lot of people don't do it. This theme always comes up. How am I gonna socialize? What am I gonna do for friends? How am I gonna have any type of social life? Because when you stop, when you remove something like that that's so integral to society and your identity, then you gotta rebuild it. You have to, and, and that is not comfortable. Most people have no idea how to make friends. And so they, they fall back to what they know to what's familiar instead of sticking it out, braving the unknown, facing the unknown, uh, and the uncomfortable. If you do that, if you can, can be courageous there, <laughs> I guarantee you, 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 you eventually figure that part out. I remember on December 23rd, two, 2013, I came out of my first AA meeting. I texted my five closest friends and I said, look here, uh, I have a problem and I have to do something about it. And I, I understand if you guys don't want to have anything to do with me or want to hang out with me, but I got to do this for me, otherwise I think I'm going to destroy myself. And every single one of them wrote back and they were like, why would we stop being your friend? In the end of 2016, I stopped drinking. For me to be able to sit here and help people and use my story, I have to acknowledge that I was lucky that a lot of things didn't go the way they have gone for other people or could have gone. That's why I wrote my book, Sober Letters to My Drunken Self. We're not gonna waste the second chance at life. We're gonna actually help people with the same issue. My experiences growing up made me more compassionate for the experiences of others. Compassion leads to understanding, it leads to connection, it leads to progress. I understand it when someone's life has gone an unfavorable way. If you can understand why somebody thinks a certain way, and, and that, that requires openness, curiosity, really the ability to suspend what you think is correct for enough time to at least entertain someone else's point of view. If you can do that, 
you can't help but feel compassion for somebody. There's nothing we can do separately that we can't do better together. If we want to change the world, we have to change ourselves. And so the change in the world starts with us.